Happy Friday, everyone. How are you? You all look so nice. I feel. Thank you for wearing the blazer, Steve. I know. I got. I got. I got to make you look good. Make so us look uh, make us. legitimate. He is Steve La Rosalier. Uh, my name is Sal Masakella. We are both Haitian. That's Any something. Haitians in the house? Any no. Haitians? No. Um, We're normally the only people. We are. Yeah. They said, can we have some Haitian representation at LA84 this weekend? Like, no some problem. Some Caribbean descent. Yeah. We, we've got you. It's hard to follow um, Neftali, because he's a scholar. And PhD in skateboarding. PhD is working on his PhD in skateboarding uh, in New Zealand. So when I found out we were following him, I was like, we're kind of screwed. <laughs> but we'll see what happens. For sure. Um, our relationship and the manner in which that I was able to become friends with this guy is one of those stories that, this being Los Angeles, you could easily make into a movie. <laughs> um, I was, as Julie mentioned, oh. host. Thank you. We're, just, we're gonna do that. Do that okay, like oh, we no, talked no. about. Balance. Yeah. Other side. Yeah. I was the host of the X Games. I was the host of the X Games on ESPN um, for about 13 years. I got to have this this. Career, accidental career as a broadcaster because I was someone who worked in the skateboarding and snowboarding and surfing industry and when people decided to put these sports on television they were like we need somebody who can actually make sense of the sports and when they came digging around for some reason I was the only person they could find. So they said alright we'll groom this person who knows nothing about being a broadcaster and I got a paid education in broadcasting because of my passions. I lived skateboarding, surfing and snowboarding. These are sports that changed my life. But one of the, the, the things that um, was very interesting for me as I started to work through the ranks and as these sports exploded on television via the X, X Games was that people would always come up to me and ask me, how come there's not more participants, more kids that look like you that are competing? Like you're the only person who looks like you, but you're the voice. And it made me start to think, yeah, how come? there's not more people that look like me. These sports are open to everyone, but hmm. And the more I thought about it, the more it came down to a, a simple thing, which was access and opportunity. And so around 2004, 2005, I started trying to figure out how can I use this platform that I've been given in this great relationship with ESPN to help affect uh, some change, to help provide some opportunity for kids from the lifestyle of these sports. And that's, well, that's where I'm gonna let Steve uh, pick up the story. Thanks, and uh, I'm really happy to be here to just share our story. So uh, back in 2004, uh, I was working at a mentoring program in New York City. Uh, about a year before that, I was, um, I had run my own marketing company and I just maybe, some of you guys that work in corporate uh, just realized that like maybe sometimes life isn't more than just collecting a check. and. Uh, you want to add more meaning and purpose to your life. And, and I discovered this book, and it introduced me to this whole concept of mentoring and collaborating with young people. Um, you know, back in the 80s, I was, happened to live on this sliver of a block, block in Queens uh, where uh, the, the local Jamaican dread gave me his Tony Alva skateboard, and I was gifted that, and I you know, grew up in the 80s uh, skateboarding. And uh, so I was, I was kind of an anomaly, uh, and I, that's something that we shared. Black unicorns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Black unicorns. And uh, you, probably, you probably know them, right? They, they, uh, they're usually the only black guy in the room if, if it's all, you know, people, they're the, they're the only black guy in the room. Yeah, uh, Han Solo they, Negros. They're, uh, yeah. they, they can code switch very easily. Um, they're, they're like, wow, you're, you're something special, right? Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, we, uh, we've had, I had that, um, and, you know, I, I had a lot of success in life, and I just realized that, like, I should probably be doing something more. Um, this book really just kind of changed my mind as to mentoring, so I started mentoring uh, kids in foster care, um, and at the same time, I called the richest guy that I knew, and I was like, I want you to mentor me, and uh, we just talked about life. Um, you know, kind of fast forward, I helped this nonprofit uh, that I was working at become the largest site-based mentoring program. My job was to basically do sales um, and, uh, and to, to bring in and recruit mentors. And uh, the, the, 
the most amazing thing about it is that like, I loved it so much, but I burnt out and I knew that there was a ceiling and I was at a cross, crossroads in my life and, um, and I'm, looking, I'm looking at my snowboard that's in the corner of my apartment and I'm like, if I could do anything in the world right now, what would I do? And I said, I'm gonna go snowboarding in Whistler, British Columbia, and I'm gonna snowboard, snowboard my face off. And uh, that's what I did. And it was like, I fulfilled every single powder dreams of going off of big mountains and going super fast. And it was the last run of my last day and I'm looking at the beautiful mountains. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I really wish my mentee was here with me. Um, if Willie was here with me, like his mind would be blown. And I realized that most mentoring programs, like you just sit at a table, eat pizza, do homework, and what I really wanted to do was to connect with him. I didn't want to wait a year before I can see change in him. I wanted to change now. And so I came back with this idea called Snow Mentor, and um, I was like, I need, a, I need a famous person to be a part of it. And uh, I was like, and if you saw, if you saw Sal, uh, I mean, who watched, when, who watched the X Games when Sal was on, right? It wasn't, it's not the same, obviously, now, but, uh, <laughs> I, sans dread. Um, but, you know, I was like, the black guy that's the host of the X Games, I was like, I want him. There's something <laughs> about him. There's this authenticity. When somebody, whether it was Sean White or Travis Rice when he was competing and he came down the mountain or a skateboarder landed their trick, the first person that they talked to was this guy and he was their best friend and he was able to translate that feeling for every, and I was like, that's the authenticity that I want in my organization. So I Googled uh, his name and uh, I found the press release with the phone number on it. I called his, the phone number and they said, hey, I'm Steve and I'm starting a snowboard mentoring program and I want Sal to be a part of it. They said, call his agent at CAA. So I called his agent once a week for two months <laughs> until Sal called me back. And then uh, I got on a plane the next day to see him. Yeah, so this is crazy. He's, this, I kept getting this message that said, it's Steve from the program, Steve from the program. I'm like, I don't know Steve from any program. And so finally, the assistant the says, hey, um, are you ever going to call Steve from the program back, or should I just tell him to beat it? I was like, let me get on the phone with him. And we had a four-hour conversation that night that started in my car. I was in my house. We found out we were both Haitian. We loved hip-hop, and we loved snowboarding. And that's how the idea of Stoked was born. Long story short, Steve flew out to Los Angeles the very next day, slept on my couch for a week, and we started this organization. Yep. So uh, here we are, 11 years later. Uh, he's my best friend and brother. We are now in New York City, uh, Los Angeles, as well as now Chicago, where Steve has moved his family to. Describe for the audience, Stoked. So the original concept was just mentoring through action sports. So like you take a big brother, big sister, but put that on, on uh, on the mountain, at the skate park, or at the beach. Um, but it was really more about just life skills. And so, you know, I, kept, I keep looking for pillars of, of sort of body of knowledge and evidence that what we're doing is right. And, and uh, it, was, it was really around uh, 21st century life skills and, 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 you know, core youth development. So, you know, from skateboarding, snowboarding, surfing, the kids learn uh, resilience, self-reliance, and how to build community. Um, and then a few years later, we have an after-school program where kids are building skateboards after school, so they're learning design thinking. Like we've partnered with ad agencies to create a curriculum using Stanford design thinking, so they're coming up with their own brands, and, um, but using the same uh, concept of that. I mean, really, what it, I guess what it comes down to is like I love the sports and I love the lifestyle of the sports. What I, I'm, I, you know, our Caribbean background, my Caribbean background is like, what are you going to do with it, right? Like, I don't, it's not enough for our kids to have, learn how to do a trick or an ollie. Like, I want our kids to be able to afford their own lift pass. I want them to be able to, like, be executives. I want them to sit at the table at the, you know, at the 2028. Like, I want them at the table um, because I think that's what our kids need, and I feel like it's a disservice just to give them the sports. Like, it's, it, they have to give everything. 
how would you say, you can clap. <laughs> how would you say that these sports, these activities inform making better people? So, you know, I, I think they might have described it in the last thing, but like just look at a skateboarder, right? If you just look at a skateboarder, and I mean, the part of it is rooted in like, you know, Angela Duckworth's grit, right? So like if you just take that as a four, uh, core fundamental concept, look at a kid that's like, that is practicing a trick a uh, hundred times, right? They land it on the hundred first time, they don't land it on the hundred second time, but they go for another hundred. What do you think that does to a young person's head if they have that kind of determination, right? They have the audacity to go for their things in life, they are more collaborative, I mean, Honestly, if you look at what's happening in the world today, I'm like, just give skateboarders, snowboarders, and surfers a chance to, to run things. Because we see beyond race, we are more collaborative, we solve problems, we don't look at, if you ever go snowboarding, skateboarding, you'll never look at your environment the same. And so that, that's what it, we're all about changing perspectives. When it comes to, to, to mentoring and, and coaching at Stoked, uh, you have a very, sort of an interesting mindset for how you look at what coaching means. Yeah, so I mean, the whole thing really started because I got a, a mentor and a coach and it was really rooted in personal development, right? Like our kids learn about like uh, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, they recite the self-confidence formula. On the way up to the mountain, we have them do deep breaths and, and visualize their future. And so like when we think about coaching, we don't, we don't coach to technique, we coach for character. Right, and, and it's really about rooted in our core values. Stoke stands for success, teamwork, openness, kudos, energy, and determination. Can you say that again slowly for the people in the back? Success, teamwork, openness, kudos, energy, and determination. And so everything that's how we run our organization, that's how we run our programs, is just based off of those fundamentals. And when you talk about those programs, you know, we started off, like Steve said, really the meat and potatoes was taking the kids, picking them up, partnering them with a young adult mentor, and having them have this experience where they would learn to surf together, learn to skateboard together, learn to snowboard together. And a lot of really great things came from that. Um, first of all, being that it wasn't just the kids who were being mentored, but our mentors found themselves being mentored by the children. When you take a grown up and an adult and you put them in a situation where neither of them are experts and they both need each other to succeed, it yeah. breaks down this sort of, I'm the adult and you're the kid. It's like, we actually both need to live. And it, it, it builds and fosters this instant f commonality and a friendship and breaks down those walls. Yeah. From that though, we really realized that we needed to make a difference in the community and how we could affect these kids having some responsibility in their communities, yeah. speak to that. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, our kids inform all of our decisions for programming. I, I think if you're, if you're any, if if you work with young people, if you listen hard enough, they'll tell you exactly what they want. All right, and so our kids will tell us like, yeah, we want more after school programs. Yes, we want to be leaders. Um, here in Los Angeles, uh, you know, we you know we have this program, and it happens in all of our programs, which is called Stoke to Serve. Uh, kids beautify, uh, uh, you know, domestic violence shelters. They um, uh, make food for homeless and skate and give it at MacArthur Park. Um, you know, gardening projects, murals. Like, they they want more. Um, and um, yeah, and and I get the the video, right? Yeah, yeah. So we did this. Um, we did this project with uh, Mountain Dew using design thinking. We asked the kids, what do you want? And then the problem that they found was that there aren't a lot of safe places to skate. And so uh, they conceived of a mobile skate park and a, a community event. So this happened last year. and had a bunch of different locations in Los, um, in Los Angeles. And so the, the kids designed the skate park. They designed the, the content and the programming. And so I think we're going to yeah. play a video. Watch this. LA State Movement has been great. They wanted to bring something to parts of LA that didn't have uh, safe places to skate. And so they came up with an idea of a mobile skate park, kind of pushed the positive idea of skateboarding. Worked with a lot of people who have never been on a skateboard. It's been a great introduction to action sports for people in the community. 
The LA Skate Movement is great because it gives kids an opportunity to one, skate together and develop that camaraderie and those relationships and also just have fun on the course. We have three different workshops, each an hour long, where I'll be skating with the kids and just cruising around and having a good old time and enjoying the sun. Skating has so much to offer. There is no right way or wrong way. You can come out and do the goofiest tricks that nobody else does. But if that feels good to you, do it. And keep moving forward with it because it's something that you can enjoy, you know, for a lifetime. In the past, uh, when raising funds, because we are a nonprofit, um, you, we would find ourselves asking people for checks because that's the, the easiest thing to do. How do you feel like you've been able to grow, or we've been able to grow, in how we work with, with companies and organizations to, to become involved and give them an opportunity to not, to, to, to not feel like, there's, like the check is the only way? Yeah. So, I mean, with us, um, I mean, the, our very first sort of corporate donor was ESPN, and I said, and I, I mean, I even say this, uh, we had a, a relationship with Quicksilver for a long time, and I was like, yeah, it's not enough to have a check. There's, in every single company, there's so much talent and resources, and so, you know, you have some of these companies with brands with large social accounts, so imagine a, an Instagram post or a tweet, you know, uh, supporting an organization. That would be, that would be huge, or um, having employees become mentors, um, and being able to, I mean, a lot of, there's a lot of sort of waste in corporations that could be rediverted towards uh, philanthropic causes like us. When you, you think about the Olympics now, yeah. you, we, we heard uh, on that last panel, you know, that this idea of skateboarding and, and surfing being a part of the Olympic conversation, for me, it's still weird to even think of because I spent so much of my career with people telling me that I wasn't even a real sportscaster because I wasn't commentating on real sports. And now I'm sitting there like, <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> nice to see you. Oh, the Olympics? Yeah, we're going to be running that. Um, how do you feel that this, what do you think it's going to do for these sports and culture? And at the end of the day, for organizations that are trying to work within communities and youth using these, the, the principles of sports like skateboarding and, and surfing to, to really grow and make great kids. Yeah, so I mean, it kind of goes back to, I remember a, a couple of years ago, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this way in a sort of rewind about Ray, but um, you know, a couple of years ago, I read this article by David Brooks in the New York Times, and it talked about the opportunity gap. And uh, when Renata said earlier that PE is a social justice issue, I, I wholeheartedly believe it. And if you look at physical education or sports in general, um, and if you look at the sports that we do, snowboarding, skateboarding, and surfing, those are probably at the upper echelon of, uh, of sports, right? And so for me, I don't think it's fair that kids get to, you know, only a small amount of kids get to experience being on top of a mountain or get, you know, world-class access to safe skate spots and, 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 and being able to, um, you know, surf in beautiful destinations. That's not fair. It's not fair that LA kids never see the mountain and never get to see snow. It's not fair that kids get to never get to go into the ocean, right? And so it's, it's fundamentally a, a, a social justice issue and it, I think it's our responsibility and we're working really hard to just make sure that it's like the same thing that middle class kids get, low income kids get at least from an enrichment perspective. And we surround them with the skills, relationships, and experiences so that they become successful. So when you think about the Olympics, right, you're like, oh, it's the upper echelon of governing sports, right? It's like, oh, you've just validated what we've been doing for the past 13 years. Thank you. Now we're gonna take that validation and run with it. You talk about kids having that opportunity, which was really how we were linked together, both sort of sharing this idea of how can we have kids, they might not become, we don't have this, this fantasy that we're going to uh, create the, a future Olympians. It'd be great if that happened, but the value that comes from these sports and from this lifestyle uh, in, the, in the approach of how you look at your life is really what we focus on. And, and it's made the difference, I think, 
in how I approach my career. I know it's made a difference for you. You, you talk about those opportunities for kids. What kind of difference have you seen in the kids who've gone through our program? How do they sort of develop and change and grow? Yeah, I think on a, on a, on a fundamental level, I, I see them, they actually see that there's more options in life for them. And I think overall, regardless of whether it's snowboarding or skateboarding, it's like if kids come from, uh, uh, if, you're, if you surround them with good people, you pr work with them for a long time. And that was one of the things that we did not want to do. We didn't want to be like a six week program, in and out, work with hundreds, you know, thousands of kids at once. Like we were really about, um, if you, I mean, again, I, I always go back to like, what, what do middle class kids get? Like they get instruction and they get support and they get resources for many years. So why are we shortchanging low income kids? Like we shouldn't. And so I think about the long, like working with kids for long term. And so what they get out of it is like, they have this supportive community, right? They have the relationships that come from that. They believe that they can do something bigger than themselves. And they know that if they fall, failing is part of life, right? Just because you uh, fail, that doesn't mean that you're a failure. It's an action. And so like, and we're always about progressing and like taking the tenets of, of action sports. It's like, okay, so if you land, you know, you land an ollie, and then the next thing you do is like try to ollie overboard. After you land overboard, you, you know, do a, you know, two stairs, three stairs, and you're just constantly progressing. And so that's what we've found in our kids. Like our kids, I mean, it's this generation now, like we've been fortunate enough to work with millennials and now this generation Z. It's, it's very interesting to see like what they latch onto and the kids now are just a lot more entrepreneurial. Like they actually see that there's options in life. If you were able to have a, a, a five year vision yeah. um, of, of where we are able to go, yeah. and the work that we're able to do moving forward. Um, how, how, how do you look at the future for Stoke? I mean, we're in LA, we're in, we're in New York, we should have never been in LA when we- Never we, should have. <laughs> but we're in LA. Yeah, yeah. We definitely should have never been in Chicago, but we're in, we're in Chicago now. Yeah. Um, we, we've talked about this idea of, of Stoke being able to be like plug and play. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you think we can grow in other organizations um, to sort of spread their message? Yeah, I think, I mean, they're just collaborations, events like this really, really help because it helped build a community. I mean, I'm friends with Vina, who is, you know, like, but we talk often. I'm friends with a lot of, <laughs> a lot of our peers. Um, and it's, it's honestly, it's, um, the vision really is to just do great work. I mean, you know, over the past, uh, uh, we started in 2000, uh, 2005, officially, uh, we worked with 4,000 kids. Uh, this year, we'll work with 23 high schools in three cities, about 650 kids. Um, we give each of those kids access to 570 hours of programming. If you look at traditional big brothers, big sisters, about 48 hours. Like, I just want to go inch wide, mile deep. I want our kids to, I honestly, I'm not joking, I want our kids to be working on the planning of, you know, 2028. I want our kids to be help you know, diverse executives in these marketing and advertising fields and sports fields, like we owe it to them. We owe it to the industry and the longevity to, to be able to create really successful young people. So, I mean, the, the future is to just go inch wide, mile deep, um, and, uh, and potentially younger. Right now we're working with high school students, but I wanna work with younger kids. Like when you say younger? Like elementary, middle, yeah. Catch them young. Yeah. Well, uh, I can honestly, honestly say that in the last 11 years of being able to have this relationship with you uh, as a partner in yeah. Stoked, but also as a friend, your drive and your commitment to being there for these kids. And I mean, this guy literally picked up his family last year and said the only way that we're gonna be able to figure out Chicago is if I live there. And he moved his wife, two kids, and a baby on board to Chicago to figure that out. And that's how stoked Chicago was born. Um, when I tell you that I don't think I would be in the place in my career where I'm still reaching out to grow and try new things, 
uh, it, it wouldn't, I wouldn't be in the place that I am without being able to share your friendship and be able to have uh, your guidance and inspiration. So thank you, sir. Cool. And, and thank to, you to you, man. Here's to another, another 11 years. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank you.